Recently, I turned 16 and almost immediately found myself in a difficult situation with my parents concerning a trust fund. My grandfather had left me a fact I only discovered upon reaching adulthood. Growing up, my grandparents were my primary caretakers because my parents were often away for work. My father was a PMO manager, and my mother accompanied him on his travels, leaving me to enjoy a more stable childhood with my grandparents. Although I cherished the bond I shared with my grandparents, the absence of my parents throughout my formative years left me feeling unwanted. This feeling only intensified when, despite settling back in town to start a bakery, my parents didn't invite me to live with them, prolonging my stay with my grandparents for another one year. Recently, when I came of age, my parents demanded I hand over my trust fund to support their business, threatening to evict me if I refused. Feeling cornered and unvalued, I chose to leave home. Now, they unfairly label me as greedy, even though I simply wish to secure my own future. This situation has only deepened my sense of detachment from them. Although they made routine visits during holidays or my birthdays, these interactions felt obligatory and lacked warmth. They often seemed more interested in fulfilling a duty than genuinely connecting with me. Their approach was always formal, as if they were conversing with a business associate rather than their daughter. Reflecting on my upbringing, it's clear that while I always had a loving home with my grandparents, the emotional distance from my parents has been profoundly challenging. It's hard not to feel that they could have done more to make me feel like a valued part of their lives. Honestly, my grandparents raised me, not my parents. Legally, my parents are recognized as such, but I never felt a genuine connection with them. This disconnection has always been a source of heartache for me, and it's not just a feeling, it's a reality I've come to understand through some painful truths I uncovered over the years. One such moment happened when I was around 10 years old during my birthday. After the celebrations, everyone had left, and my parents were supposed to stay overnight. I was living with my grandparents at the time, as I was heading to my room, I heard loud voices coming from my grandfather's office. It was unusual because he was typically a calm person. Curiosity got the better of me, and I eavesdropped on the conversation. What I heard that night was heart-wrenching. My grandfather was confronting my parents about how they were neglecting me, warning them that their behavior could permanently damage our relationship. He stressed that they wouldn't always be around and eventually, it would just be us. Despite no longer needing to travel for his job, my dad hadn't invited me to live with them, choosing instead to let me stay with my grandparents. The conversation revealed that while my grandparents loved having me with them, they were concerned about the odd and distant relationship I had with my parents. My grandfather believed it was crucial for my parents to make more effort to be involved in my life. To this, my father responded that I seemed happy enough with my grandparents and he was too busy with the bakery to act as a father. My mother echoed his sentiments, saying she too was overwhelmed with the business and household duties. They both admitted that taking on parental responsibilities wasn't a priority for them as they set up their business. I went to bed in tears that night, and it turned out to be the worst birthday ever. Despite a lovely party, the truths I overheard were too painful to forget. It became clear that in my parents' eyes, I was more of a responsibility they were obligated to deal with rather than a priority. This realization has stuck with me shaping my views on our relationship and confirming the emotional neglect I always felt but could never quite articulate until that moment. After enduring the profound loss of my grandparents who were essentially my primary caregivers during my formative years within a year of each other during the pandemic, I was left deeply devastated. My grandfather succumbed to complications from diabetes first and just nine months later I lost my grandmother. Their deaths plunged me into a state of grief that I can only describe as depressive. I spent my days in a haze of sadness, barely functioning beyond watching TV, sleeping, and occasionally eating. This was a dark time I felt like a zombie, simply existing without truly living. Reluctantly, I moved back in with my parents because I had nowhere else to go. My relationship with them, which had already been strained due to their earlier neglect and lack of involvement in my life, worsened as I struggled with my grief. I harbored a deep resentment towards them, irrational as it may sound wishing it had been them instead of my grandparents who had passed. This thought was a clear indicator of my distress. Despite their financial stability, thanks to my father's successful career and the inheritance from my grandparents, my parents remained emotionally unavailable. They were preoccupied with their bakery, which had been struggling, and showed little concern for my mental well-being. They didn't suggest psychiatric help, which I felt I needed, 
nor did they attempt to engage with me or understand my suffering. Their indifference only deepened my sense of isolation and abandonment. Living with them felt like an ongoing battle, with each day intensifying my feelings of being misunderstood and neglected. The profound disconnect between us made it painfully clear that the only people who had truly cared for me were gone, and now I was stuck in an environment where my well-being seemed to be the least of anyone's concerns. This environment only served to exacerbate my depression and resentment, trapping me in a cycle of sorrow and anger. I often felt invisible to my parents, as if I could vanish and they wouldn't notice until it was too late. It's upsetting even to talk about how stifling and terrible living with them felt. However, that was the situation up until a couple of years ago when things slowly began to improve. As I started to recover from my emotional turmoil, I began opening up to my friends about my strained relationship with my parents. I had braced myself for judgment, but to my relief, they were incredibly supportive. My best friend since kindergarten, Ellie, was especially understanding. She not only offered her support, but also shared my situation with her parents, who kindly told me their door was always open if I needed help. This support was a lifeline that truly meant a lot to me. Over the past one years, my life has improved significantly. Despite my parents' continued indifference, I've learned to cope with my challenges with a little help from my friends. I decided to postpone college to gain some real-world experience, even though most of my friends were heading off to university. I knew I had a college fund set up by my grandfather, which I could access once I enrolled, but I also needed to prove my acceptance to access the funds, according to the stipulations discussed with my grandparents' lawyer. Interestingly, a couple of weeks ago, their lawyer contacted me and revealed that I also had a trust fund set up by my grandparents that became accessible when I turned 16. This was meant to be a surprise, ideally shared with me by my grandparents if they were still alive. But unfortunately, that responsibility fell to their lawyer. The news came just after my birthday, and amid the emotional moment, I decided to make a social media post to express my gratitude towards my grandparents, who had always looked out for me. Reflecting on how much I missed them, I thought sharing these feelings online would help me process my grief. However, I quickly regretted making such personal sentiments public. I realized that some things might have been better kept private, as not all emotional moments need to be shared with the world. This experience was a poignant reminder of the complex ways we handle grief and the unexpected consequences of sharing our feelings in the digital age. I should have realized that keeping some things private would be wiser. Unfortunately, after I shared a heartfelt post about my grandparents' trust fund, my parents quickly caught wind of it, likely tipped off by a relative, since neither of them is active on social media, and I certainly hadn't added them. The very next day, they approached me, something they rarely do unless it's important usually to them and concerning money. They started off by mentioning how sweet they thought my grandfather's gesture was. Their uncharacteristic approach and the sudden interest in the contents of my post set off alarm bells in my mind. As expected, the conversation took a turn towards their bakery business. They explained that they were looking to expand, but were short on funds. They suggested that dipping into my trust fund would be an easy solution for them. They reasoned that they couldn't bring in investors at the moment because it wasn't the right time to sell shares and they didn't want to risk more of their own money without guaranteed returns. Essentially, they were hoping I would provide financial help without expecting anything in return essentially, a donation to their business venture. I was astounded by their audacity. How could they expect me to simply hand over the money that my grandfather had specifically set aside for my future? They weren't just asking for a small portion, they wanted access to the entire fund to funnel into their business. I firmly told them that I would not be partaking in their plans. If they needed funds, they should seek out proper business loans or find investors willing to take a share of the risk. The money from my grandfather was meant for my educational and personal growth not to bail them out of their financial mismanagement. Their frustration grew as I continued to resist their requests. Eventually, the conversation escalated to a point where my father, visibly annoyed, presented me with an ultimatum, help fund their business or leave the house. This confrontation highlighted just how much they were willing to leverage their own child's future for their ambitions. Deepening the rift between us and solidifying my resolve to protect my inheritance and my future, my mother coldly informed me that I could either share the funds with them or leave their house, emphasizing that as an adult, they were no longer obligated to support or house me. The irony of their calling me selfish, when they had prioritized themselves over my needs throughout my life, was not lost on me. They framed their ultimatum as a fair choice, 
reflecting the real-world consequences of my decisions, but I sensed an underlying assumption on their part that I wouldn't manage without them. They couldn't have been more wrong. Despite their minimal involvement in my life, I had grown accustomed to relying on myself, and their latest demand only solidified my resolve. I didn't confront them directly after their ultimatum. Instead, I agreed to think it over, giving myself time to plan my next steps quietly. That night, I decided to leave. I had already discussed the situation with my best friend Ellie and her parents, who were more like a family to me than my own had ever been. They understood my predicament and offered me a place to stay for as long as I needed. This support provided me the safety net I needed to make a swift exit from my parents' home. Leaving without a word might seem harsh, but in my eyes, it was justified. My parents had never shown me the consideration that would warrant a formal goodbye. They didn't deserve an explanation for my departure because they had never extended me the basic courtesy or care a parent should. Predictably, when they realized I was gone, they were more outraged than concerned. They bombarded me with calls, but it wasn't until the evening that I finally responded. Their questions were not about my well-being, but rather about the trust fund and what I planned to do with it. This response was disappointing, but not surprising. I firmly told them that I had decided against sharing my inheritance. The money was meant for my future, as my grandfather intended, not to bail them out of their financial irresponsibility. I was clear that I would not be their charity case. It was a tough but necessary stance to protect my future and maintain my integrity. I had already made it clear to my parents that I wasn't interested in giving them any handouts. They had never prioritized me. And now, without my grandparents, I needed to prioritize myself. I'm quite certain that my grandparents left me this money specifically so I could support myself after they passed, knowing the kind of parents I had. I decided not to help my parents financially, and that decision was final. Since making my decision, my parents have been creating a stir, accusing me of being exceptionally greedy. They've even gone as far as bad-mouthing me to all our relatives and their friends. I've been bombarded with messages calling me greedy, which is frustrating and has led me to question my actions despite reassurances from Ellie and her parents that I'm doing the right thing. It's tough, and I find myself wishing for an objective perspective to reaffirm that I'm not being unreasonable. The overwhelming support from some lovely comments online about my grandparents has been heartwarming. It reassures me that if my grandparents could see this, they would be proud. As for those reaching out to criticize me based solely on my parents' narrative, I realized I shouldn't take their words to heart. These people don't really know me or my story, they are just echoing my parents' side. In response, I decided to address everyone involved. I posted online that anyone who truly supports my parents should consider investing in their business themselves, rather than pressuring me to use my trust fund. I also publicly told my parents that their attempts to guilt trip me were only strengthening my resolve. I made it clear. They were manipulative and selfish, and they couldn't see beyond their own needs. My parents had given me a stark choice, share my trust fund or leave. I chose to leave, asserting my independence. If there's any greed in this situation, it's not coming from me. Their strategy to make me feel guilty has failed. Instead, it has empowered me to stand firm in my decision, sever ties, and manage my life and finances without their interference. After making my feelings clear and responding publicly to the people who criticized me, I decided to turn off my phone. I was done with the drama and had nothing more to add to the conversation. I was confident those I tagged would relay my message to my parents. So I felt a sense of closure and was ready to move on to the next chapter of my life. I knew it was time to start focusing on finding a job and an apartment. I'm deeply grateful for Ellie and her parents' generosity. They've told me I could stay with them as long as I need to, but I feel it's important to stand on my own feet. I don't want to rely on others indefinitely. Not after depending on my grandparents, then briefly on my parents, and now my friend's family. With the support of my trust fund, I'm in a good position to take care of myself, so I'm optimistic about what lies ahead. It's been four days since I last posted online, and as expected, everyone I called out has blocked me. They've likely passed my messages on to my parents, who are furious. They sent a message saying they were cutting ties with me, which I calmly accepted and blocked them in return. This feels like a clean break, and honestly, it's a relief to be free from that negativity. On a brighter note, the search for an apartment is going well. I found a place and will be sharing it with a roommate, which I think is a responsible move. I'm excited about this new beginning and the independence it brings.
I've officially moved out of Ellie's house. It was a bittersweet goodbye, especially since she's also heading off to college soon. Now settled in my new apartment, I've also landed a job in the community manager department of an advertising agency. I'm eager to start this new role and hopeful about what the future holds. My parents and I haven't spoken in the past few weeks, and I've been too busy to dwell on past conflicts. Life is genuinely good now, and I'm focused on building a future that would make my grandparents proud.